Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dave, and on this channel, I cover my passion, my love, for LEGO investing. I also do cover some other things on the channel, which you would probably know if you've seen our Wednesday or Friday videos. This particular video, though, is airing on Monday, which means it is definitely about our LEGO investment side of things. And I figured I would do something a little bit different on this one. Um, try and share a little bit of information or uh, things that I've kind of been thinking about and looking into, as well as answering a user-submitted question. So we're going to go ahead and do that. That's going to be the main focus of the video. So uh, if you're not interested in sitting around and listening to my thoughts, my opinions on LEGO investment, uh, then this might not be the video for you. If you want to see more orders or uh, more hauls, that's not going to be in this video. Come back next week or go to last week's or probably wait around till Wednesday or maybe Friday. Let's go ahead and get into this. I've been doing a lot of watching of different YouTube videos across the whole gamut of different investment type um, scenarios and products and things. And this has to do with trying to diversify my investments a little bit, and, and I spoke about that last week. That's not what this video is about. However, I found it interesting seeing some different things out there and watching some videos that were talking a little bit about some differences between historical investments and speculative investments, and I felt like that was kind of applicable a little bit to this particular question. So before I get too far uh, off the rails here, this question comes to us from Satoshi Nakamoto, and I probably butchered your name. So if not, though, Satoshi, please let me know in the comments below if I got your name right. I'm really curious. Satoshi asked, can you make a living reselling Lego? Which I thought was a pretty interesting question. Uh, and I think there's a couple different ways that you can approach that or look at that question. And so I wanted to, before I just answer it, I wanted to frame the question a little bit more with the context of how I'm going to answer it. So I believe that there are different avenues here. The question specifically asks about reselling Lego. Can you make a living reselling Lego? And to quantify that a little bit, I personally consider reselling Lego to be different than investing in Lego. And so let me explain on that a little bit more. Reselling of Lego, I look at something as I'm a reseller of sorts when it comes to maybe the Bricklink side. The Bricklink side is a reselling business, right? I purchased Lego sets. I take those Lego sets apart or I buy used lots, although I don't do this a whole lot, and pull out the individual pieces, list those pieces in my store, and make them available to maybe a larger market at a profit, right? So I might spend $10 on a, a Lego set, break it down into a bunch of pieces, sell it for $20, let's say. And that is a market, right? That is a service that I provide. I am taking it and reselling it. So as it relates to my involvement in the reselling of Lego, I kind of look at it as though that's really the limit of what I resell. I don't consider the other aspects of what I do to be resale. So resale in my head is the purchasing of a product to be resold in a smaller time window with the purpose of making a profit immediately. An online retailer or a brick and mortar store both can be resellers. Generally, those people end up purchasing their sets from a distributor. They purchase those sets for less than what the MSRP is or what the list price is so that they have margin or room that they can mark that set up and make it available for sale. So for instance, if I just grab a random set here, this is the Superman and Crypto team up. If we assume that this set were available today, it would have retailed for $19.99 as its sticker price. Assuming that I purchase this from a distributor, 
I would expect in general that I probably would have paid about 12 or maybe close to 10. It might depend on the quantity that I do with the distributor. But if I bought this from a distributor, I would expect that I wouldn't be paying any more than around $12 for this or roughly 60% of the list price, which gives me about a 40% rough margin that I can purchase this set and I can sell this set to the general public and that's how I could make a living. Whether I choose an online retail store or a brick and mortar store, I think that that is generally feasible because this is just one product that I have the ability to market or to offer to my customers. When somebody comes to my store, I'm likely also going to, if I have a brick and mortar or an online store, I'm going to purchase other types of toys, collectibles, trading card games, a lot of different things. I might even get into some art, collectibles, memorabilia that I want to also offer to my customers that I can get maybe from those same distributors or different distributors because really what I have is a niche toy collectible type store, right? So my living isn't necessarily made around Lego, although it may, in that instance, make up the majority of the inventory that I carry as a store, in which case I would say I generally would make a living um, reselling that Lego. Certain brick and mortars also have been very capable of purchasing collections or used sets. I know that we have some stores in our area called Bricks and Minifigures, I believe, in which case people will bring in their collections and sell them to you, in which case that requires very current knowledge of the market at the time that you're purchasing them. Because when someone brings in this set, and maybe it's sealed, maybe it's not, I, as the store owner or employee in charge of assessing value, I need to be able to determine exactly what we can sell this for. So if I know that the current value of this set is $20 on the open market, and somebody brings that in to sell to me, I might be willing to pay 10, I might be willing to pay 12. Each store is able to kind of assess what they are looking for in terms of margin, but that's basically how I can guarantee a similar type profit. Both distributors and purchasing of used or um, collections from individuals, both of those are ways that you can ensure that you get some amount of profit margin in there. If I were to be running an online retail store or a brick and mortar store, I would say yes, you can definitely make a living buying and reselling Lego because I'm buying from distributors that give me some pretty, I don't want to say guaranteed, but they give me the room or the margin that I can make the profit that I need to keep my store open, maybe pay employees, as well as pay myself and make a living. Or when I buy those sets from customers, I know that I'm only going to pay so much because I know the current value that I can do all those same things. So when we're talking about retail, reselling Lego, yes, you can make a living. It is totally possible, especially when you add in the fact that you're going to have those other collectibles, other toys, other items that you can offer to your customers. You can make a living reselling Lego. So now to take a turn over in the investment side of things. For those of you who know the channel, I refer to the Lego stuff that I do outside of the BrickLink store as Lego investing. And that's because I do look at it different than reselling. I don't go out and purchase an item off the shelf for retail price expecting that I can turn around and resell that for a profit. Are there times where I do purchase collections and sets from individuals? Yes. Do I have to know exactly what the market value is today? Not really. I tend to look at it a little bit more of what was the MSRP of the item and how long has it been retired or if not. And I use that to determine a little bit about whether I'm going to buy it because I'm not looking to buy it and immediately sell it. That's one difference in my Lego investment versus the concept of resale in my mind, as well as the fact that, look, there are two different ways, right? You can be a short-term investor. 
Oftentimes in this particular market, it's referred to as quick flipping. And where that tends to be most applicable is when you're kind of talking about Q4 or potential stock shortages. If we use this set as an example, if this were on the store shelf today, I may be interested in buying this for full retail price, $20, if I suspected that come this Christmas time, there may be a shortage of this. If I think that the demand for this product is going to go crazy through the roof before Christmas or for Christmas specifically, then I may want to buy this earlier in the year for $20 knowing that when I get to Q4 and all the $20 inventory has been sold and is no longer in stock, I will be able to put this item on the market possibly for $40 or $50 or $30. And and that's where it kind of gets into this I'm going to I'm going to use speculation and I don't know if that's necessarily the correct term, but in essence I believe that this thing's going to go up in value and so I'm going to purchase it with a short-term hold mentality. I'm looking to just try and get a quick flip out of it and make some portion of profit so that I can take that money and look into whatever the next quick flip might be. And it doesn't necessarily have to relate to Q4. Q4 is certainly when you get a massive demand for product. But there's other times in the year where, for instance, the Republic gunship Star Wars uh, Lego set, UCS, just recently came out almost immediately sold out, which means there are people who saw that set releasing, they went out and purchased that product because they could with the intent not to long-term hold it, not to necessarily resell it, because again, I think it's different in the sense that they have no margin built into it. It's not what they do, but they intend on quick flipping it, which is resale. It's it's really hard in my mind to explain why I associate a difference between reselling Lego and short-term investments of Lego, but I, I do really feel like there is a difference, and that is one that I think falls into that short-term investment category. I purchase this set, I bring it home, and I'm expecting that the stock price, if I relate it to stocks, the stock price is going to shoot up in the short term. And as soon as I see that stock price hit the cap or the value that I'm looking to get out of it, I'm going to go ahead and throw it back out there. Now, I'm making that purchase fully expecting that the reason the stock's going to shoot up is because the demand for the product is going to cause there to be a shortage of supply in the short term. I think it's a crazy hot product, or maybe I know that stock is going to be limited because it's just releasing or because of a manufacturing issue. There may be all sorts of reasons why I'm going to purchase into something as a short-term investment. I personally don't really do much short-term investments. I think that it is the riskier route to go. I will purchase this $20 set, and if there ends up being no demand for it, this $20 set I'm going to be hanging on to way longer than I anticipated if my assumption of the market was wrong. And that's why I lean more into the long-term investment side of things. And now the long-term investment is me having a theory that based on some history of data that, that I can look at and that you can look at, and there's a lot of great tools out there, Camel, Camel, Camel. You can look at eBay trend, uh, price trends, price guides, I think is what they call it. There are different avenues to assess What's kind of been the history of other related similar products? And based on the history of those other products, or maybe even the history of the product that you are purchasing, you might be able to see some trends and make the assumption to say, look, this Superman set, I can get it for $20. Based on other Superman sets that have sold in the past for $20 that are now trending towards $40, $50, maybe $60, I'm going to look at this one and say, you know what? I think it's worth picking up because I think that this has the potential to be that same kind of set. Hit $50, $60. And so I'm going to purchase this, hopefully multiple quantities, look at it like a stock, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to stick it on a shelf. And I'm going to wait to see 
how the price ends up trending, right? As the stock depletes, as the set retires, as uh, people are unavailable to get their hands on this product, it's going to become more scarce. And with scarcity comes increased value. Once that increased value hits the return on the investment that I want, that's when I'm going to put it out on the market. It might be 12 months from now. It might be 24 months from now. It may take three years before the sets hits the return that I'm looking for. But that's in essence what I'm betting on or gambling on might be another way to look at it is that based on my knowledge of the market, based on doing some research and due diligence into the particular items that I'm investing into, I feel strongly that it's going to go up in price. And that's what my long-term investment is. That's what I do. That is different in my head than resale. And so when I ask the question of, can you make a living investing in Lego? I have a little bit of a difference in opinion in that I don't think it's very feasible. As much as I do see potential in this market today, to make a living off of something, you need to be able to pull cash out of it. You need to be able to pull money back out so that you can live. That's the making a living part of that question. And with an investment, you're putting these things on a shelf or in storage for long periods of time. We see the return because we're playing the waiting game. And I don't think that's nearly as feasible. I think it's possible that you could grow your investments to a point that you may be able to get away with it. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of cash. If we were to say, play it safe and assume that it takes three years before you could double your money on a Lego set. That means that if I wanted to make a living off of it, the sets that I buy today, I won't be able to sell for three years. So I need to spend the next three years building stock, building inventory. And if I want to live off of that money in three years, let's pretend like I've determined I could live off of $50,000 a year. That's the price point I want to get to. That means that this year, if I want to live off of Lego investment in three years, that means this year, year one, I need to spend $50,000 on Lego and stick it on a shelf. Because what's going to happen is that next year, it's not going to do anything. But I still need to spend another $50,000 on Lego. And then year three, I need to spend another 50000 which means I have a total upfront kind of primer that I'm required of around $150,000 over those three years that I'm going to ration out there, 50000 a year, just to buy inventory and put it on a shelf. So that when I get to year four, in essence, three years hopefully since my very first batch has retired, I can take all that stuff off the shelf and I can sell it. And if I manage to sell all of it for twice what I have paid for it, that means in year four, I have finally gotten to a point where I've made $100,000. But if I want to keep living, right, if this is going to be my living, the investment side, I need to take 50000 of that and buy inventory so that in year seven, I'll be able to do the same thing. We're talking about a very large upfront cost in order to get the machine running. And we have to really be putting all of our cards on the table or all of our chips in the pot. There's an expression or a saying there in order to make that possible. And if it, it's really relying upon the fact that I think Lego is going to be strong, not even just three years out anymore, but I need to be very confident that it's going to be that way four years out, five years out, six years out. If I'm going to invest that kind of money, and that's just so that you can make that 50K to make a salary that I would want to live off of, 
it would be a lot more than that, which would be very challenging. It would require massive upfront investments into something that is a very speculative investment. Do I feel good about the investment that I have made at this point? I do. And I think that in three years, I will make more money and I will probably continue to invest in this product as I go. But as you may be seen, or if not, please go back and check out last Friday's video, is that I am trying to diversify my investments because if you put all your eggs in one product basket, let's say that you have an off year. Let's say that there's a year where, you know what? The value of these sets aren't going up or they plummet, right? They trickle back down. You can't rely upon that income anymore. And that's really critical to making a living off of it. So making a living off of investment in Lego, I don't think is overly feasible. I think that it's too risky of a way of life and requires too large of an initial investment. If you were to do it slowly over time and you were to build up to that point over maybe a 10 year period, well, A, it hasn't required as critical of an upfront cost because it's been a slow investment, which helps. And B, you have then had a 10 year window to be able to assess and gain some more historical data and knowledge over what that looks like and how that feels. And you can then assess the feasibility um, but I'm not there yet, and so I certainly can't say that. I think that investing in Lego is a great way to spur some additional income at a relatively low risk when I'm looking three years out. I do feel like Lego is going to still be going pretty strong, and I feel good that the value of almost all my sets will end up increasing by then. There are certainly some exceptions of ones that have not increased over the last three years. And that could be possible going forward. However, I think that it's a low risk of a complete fallout, which would be detrimental. I feel very confident that the sets that I bought today, in a worst case scenario, come three years from now, or even with some kind of a market crash, I should be able to get out of this product, at least what I put into it. I might not be getting the big high dollars, but that's also why I don't buy retired sets. I like investing in stuff at less than retail price so that I can feel good that I have a low risk in the future. Thank you very much, uh, Satoshi, for your question. I hope that uh, that helped answer the question that you were trying to ask. In short, quick summary, which is real hard for me, as you know, I've been rambling for quite some time here. I do think it's possible to make a living reselling Lego. I think you have to be a distributor. I think you have to augment that income with other particular collectibles, toys, products, lines. It can be online or it can be brick and mortar. That's fine. But I don't think it's feasible to make a living investing in Lego. I think it's a great way to augment your income, but that's the short of it. So thank you very much, Satoshi, for your question. I really appreciate it. It really got me thinking today, and it fell right in line with a lot of these other videos that I've been very uh, interested in, very topic appropriate based on my current uh, watch list. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that all of you got something cool and meaningful out of this. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below, and uh, let me know if you see a difference between short-term investments and reselling Lego. Or if you think they are completely the same, I'll be one of those people to hold up the sign and says, convince me I'm wrong. All right, everybody. Thank you all again, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.